Well, don't play the political battles and focus on earnings. That is the message from Oppenheimer Fund Senior Investment Officer and Chief Economist Jerry Webman. We should not be playing politics with our money. Is that what you're saying to me, Jerry? You know, you sort of feel like, you know, the old expression, it's, it's, the, it's the economic stupid. I think we've gotten to thinking it's the politics stupid. And yet, if you look at earnings from U.S.-based companies, the, you know, we're seeing okay fourth quarter earnings. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the earnings trend over the last several years, it's really been remarkably strong. So, and, and valuations really don't reflect it yet. So there's a lot of cash. There are a lot of good earnings. And yes, the politics matter. Yes, what happens to the tax regime matters big time. But investors should be, as they're trying to think about this, not getting distracted by the fun of watching the political debates. And look at who's making money. But oh, Well, okay, but so basically you're saying to me, don't look at politics, forget the horse race, watch corporate earnings. You're watching corporate earnings. We're watching corporate okay. earnings. That's what you are as a stock investor. You're buying future earnings. I don't say ignore the politics, and we're not, you're not going to do that no, anyway, but, right? Uh, you don't watch I, Fox yeah. News and think you're going to ignore the politics. I mean, that's what we're here for. But, well, but we're Fox Business, and we're looking at the Fox numbers. Business. So there you go. Oh, all, all right. right. Fair so, enough. Okay, so what do you think about earnings so far? We've had a lot of big names coming through. Uh, mm, how are you feeling yeah, so far about I'm earnings? I'm feeling okay. I mean, you've seen more uh, fewer upside surprises than, than you'd expect. Although, I don't know, does that mean the analysts have gotten more accurate? You know, it's 70% meets or beats, so it's okay. The revenue lines aren't exactly exciting, and that's consistent with sort of weak consumers in the fourth quarter, but I'm feeling pretty good. But I want to look at it over the last couple of years, and if I look at it for the last couple of years and the trend, it looks really positive. Okay, so, and really quick, I mean, we were showing what, you know, the things that you're looking for yep. in earnings, but you're still kind of believing in the emerging market story for U.S. multinationals. I, I, I do, and you, you see, I mean, listen, I'm not recommending any stocks, but just look at Caterpillar's story, which is both a domestic story and an international story. I think when you're finding opportunities like that, where good, strong companies have pricing power in emerging markets, I think you've got a great story to think about. So not picking Caterpillar, but an example of Just an example, right. I, I don't know whether that's a good earnings. investment or not, but it's a, it's a great example yeah. of who okay. can make money that way. Okay, all right, Jerry, more with you in just a little bit. Business market check. I have to say, it's not bad when you see the markets actually kind of come back after what was certainly a bad start this morning. And there was all this concern about Europe, and in particular the Greeks, and then Portugal. There's a lot of market chatter about Greece and Portugal and kind of where these countries are going. And frankly, U.S. investors are frustrated. Now, gold is actually down 1730. Uh, the Dow, again, down 15 points, well off of session lows, though, for the day. NASDAQ and the S&P are lower as well. Well, if you're looking for an investing opportunity, Oppenheimer Fund Senior Investment Officer and Chief Economist Jerry Webman says you need to look beyond Wall Street. What do you mean? <laughs> well, you know, it's a great big world out there, and there are companies that are based all over the world, including the U.S., that are making a lot of money where there is better growth and more stable growth than we're going to see in certainly places like Europe, but even in the U.S. Okay, so when you were on the show back on October 31st, you, uh -oh. you were talking about emerging markets. Yeah. But there's been a lot of pressure and a lot of discourse with regards to whether U.S. investors should be putting a lot of money into well, emerging markets. You know, right look, if, you'd had, if, I, if I was here a year ago and you'd asked me what my biggest concerns were, uh -huh. I would have said it looks like we're threatening with some overheating in some of these big markets around the world. Sure. Uh, China, India, Indonesia, Brazil, the Brazil, bricks. The, the bricks. Yeah. The bri well, then, you okay. know, but some of those bricks hit a brick wall. Don't, I'm not, we're not just talking bricks, but just talk about China. You okay. would have worried about Speaking overheating. Of walls. You saw a spring of the walls, so that's the wall, that Wall Street. You know, look, what's happened is they tighten policy, they tighten fiscal policy, they, they tighten lending standards, they tighten monetary policy, and the economy's coming down, and you're seeing inflation begin to weaken a little bit. Goldilocks. You know, we used to talk about Goldilocks, the Goldilocks economy, not too hot, too, not too cold. Mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons that stocks sold off so much in the emerging markets late last year was a fear of what, in fact, we wanted, a fear of getting these economies to move to a more sustainable growth rate. Now, let's, let's focus in on China. I understand, sure. because even though when you talk about emerging markets, in particular, if it is Brazil or India, there is going to be a Chinese connection. But you sure. say, so you're saying soft landing, hard landing. I mean, what, what do we take away from that, Jerry? What you I guess what we're looking for, Liz, is we want to see whether we're investing in that economy or companies that are doing business there. Uh -huh. We want economies that can grow at a sustainable, non-inflationary non rate. Yeah. That's what we mean. Well, soft landing means, oh, I'm worried about inflation, tighten policy, I slow. But, and Jerry, you can't. I mean, the hard thing about the data that we get out of China and why it's so hard and it, it causes volatility here is because 
A lot of people don't trust the data coming well, out of China. Oh, this is we, the government. I mean, I'm sorry. We trust but... the, this, the government. Like, we trust our data? Come on. Okay. So, all right. Well, I but, do live but, here. But I don't know. We live here, so we at least we speak the language. But you know, so you don't just watch the government data. You watch global demand for scrap okay. iron. You watch global okay. demand for cement. You watch global demand for coal. See, okay. all those things come off from the peaks where they were a year or so ago. Let me ask and you, you say something. something's happening. Let me ask you something. And these headlines are just crossing on uh -oh. Thomson Reuters right now. And it's about Nicholas Argosi. He is saying that he believes they are going to get a deal signed. They are going to get uh, a deal signed agreement, and then that in turn helps Greece. Does that make you feel any bit better? Uh, you know, but I, anyway, yeah, right I mean, if I, were gonna, if I were facing a presidential election in a month or so, I'd be saying the same thing. I think they will get a deal because everybody's interests are aligned behind a deal. But this is not something U.S. investors should get all hyped up about one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Look for real economic value. 25 countries if the Greeks agree, which is the other big problem. Anyway, Jerry Webb and Oppenheimer Fund, Senior Investment Officer and Chief Economist. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you.